Welcome. In this video, we will talk about if else statements in C. If else statements are also known as selection. The first if else statement that we have is one way selection. So, one way selection comes into some expression and it tests that expression. If the expression is true, it will perform some set of statements and then move on to the rest of the program. And if it is false, it will not perform any specific set of statements and it will continue from the program at the same point that the true case will continue from. One way selection looks just like this in our programs. It is if some expression, so this right here, is this part right here. So we're testing this expression. And then if this is true, it will come into these statements inside of these curly braces. AKA, if it's true, it will go inside of there. And then down here, you can have more code, which if it's false, it will go down here and run that code. And once it hits this angle, this closing bracket, of this if statement, it will continue on for the true case from that same point. The next type of selection that we have is two-way selection. And two-way selection, it will test some expression. If that expression is true, it will perform some set of, set of statements. And if that expression is false, it will perform some other set of statements and then in both the true and false cases, it will go back to some point in the program, which is the same point in the program for both the true and false case. And that looks just like this. We have some expression getting tested right here, which would be this part of the diagram. If it's true, it will execute the statements in these curly braces, which is this part of the diagram. Otherwise, it will execute this set of statements in these curly braces, which is this part of the diagram. And then down here, you can have some more code, which both of these statements will, both of these cases, the true and the false case, will execute from once they hit their closing braces. Note, if you hit the true case, it will skip over the false case and will not perform what is in the false cases curly braces. Let's take a look at this selection from a code example. So we have two constants up here. One is going to be the tax rate, that is 8.1%. We then have the shipping rate, which is just $10. And we ask the user to enter in some subtotal. And then we can calculate the tax and the shipping based on that total. And for now, we just have the shipping being calculated as a flat rate. And then it calculates the total and outputs everything to the screen. So let's see that running from the terminal. We can compile this with G++ and then the name of the program and wait for a second, which will create a file called a.out, which we can run with dot slash a.out. It will ask me for a subtotal, say it's $100, you get $100, 8.1% of $100 is $8.10, and then shipping is $10, so the total is $118.10. And you can see if I enter something like, say, I don't know, $250, you still get the tax getting calculated, the shipping, and the total. But what if we wanted to give free shipping after some dollar amount? How would we do that? Well, we would need to add in some if-else statements to this program. So let's do that. I added in this if-else statement right here which is saying if this subtotal that gets entered by the user is greater than 200, so they will get free shipping. Otherwise, they get charged whatever the shipping rate is. So let's come over here and see that from 
the terminal. Let's clear that old output out and recompile our program and then run it. And do you see if I enter in $100, I get charged $10 for shipping. But if I run it and I enter in $250, I get charged nothing for shipping. And you can see that this is inclusive of the $200. So if they spend more than or equal to $200, they get free shipping. So if I run this and enter 200 in, you see I still get free shipping. Now let's look at multiple selections. Multiple selections are when you have more than two selections that you need to make. The first one is going to be the compound if else if statements. And those look something like this. You have an if testing an expression, and then if that expression is true, it will run some set of statements. You then can test another expression using this else if statement. So if this is false, we'll check this else if statement, which will check this next expression. And if that expression is true, we will then run this set of statements. And you can have as many of these going on as long as you want. And then at the end, you would have some else, which if it doesn't fall under any of these, ex like any of these expressions, if any of them, if all of them equate to false, then it will run this else case here. And you don't have to have an else case here, but in lots of cases, you will use an else case here. Another way to perform multiple selections is to have nested if else statements. And the nested if else statements look just like this, where we have an if else statement nested inside of this if statement, where we test this expression right here. And if that is true, we come into this block of code. There should be a closing brace right here. Sorry about that. It's not there, but imagine there's a closing brace right there. And then it will come into this block of code and you get this if else statement nested inside of this if statement. So it will test this expression only if this expression is true. And then if that expression is true, it will run these statements. And then you can have an else case as well. If you want to, you don't have to have an else case. And that else case would run its own set of statements. And then again, you could have else ifs in here. That's why there's that dot, dot, dot there. You could also have else ifs right here. And then at the end of this whole thing, you would also have an else most likely you don't have to have the else, but in lots of cases you will have an else. And again, you could have a nested if else statement inside of this else. It just would have gotten very large on this slide to keep nesting more and more if else statements in there. So you can nest these inside of each other as much as you want. And you could, these statements could have more if else statements if you want. And one way to kind of avoid having to nest so deeply like this is to use larger expressions and test these two expressions and use an and to perform some set of statements inside of this if. But that's a little bit more advanced and down the road. And let's take a look at multiple selection from a program. So we have two variables, one being how much money you have and the other being how much you give to charity. If you have more than $10,000, then you are rich for the sake of this program. If you have between $5,000 and $10,000, you are almost rich for the sake of this program. And if you have less than $5,000, you are not rich for the sake of this program. In the cases that you are rich, and where you are not rich, or where you are almost rich, we are gonna check if they are charitable. And for the rich people, we are gonna check if their charitable givings 
is grit is at least 20% of their money, then we are going to consider them a very generous person. Otherwise, we are going to tell them they should give more to charity. They are not charitable enough. And in the case of the almost rich people, we think they should be giving 10% of their money to charity. So we can compile this with G++ and the name of the program. And we will be given a file called a.out, which we can run with dot slash a.out. And you see with this example of $1,000, you get you are not rich output to the screen because 1,000 is not greater than 10,000. It's not greater than 5,000. So it falls in this else case and just spits out you are not rich. But let us change it to the person being rich. So we'll just put say $11,000 here since it needs to be greater than $10,000 for them to be rich. It cannot be equal to. So we'll go higher than 10,000 and we'll just leave their charitable givings at 100 for now. Let's come over here and compile and run the program. And you see we get you are rich and you should give more to charity because we have 11,000, so it goes into this first case in outputs, you are rich, and then it checks their charitable givings divided by their m amount of money, which will tell how much of their money are they giving away, what percentage of it are they giving away, and if that percentage is greater than 20, which 100 divided by 11,000 is not greater than 20%. So it comes to this else case here, and output so that they should give more to charity. But if we changed this over to being, say, I don't know, 2000 should do the trick. Maybe just for the sake of getting it right, 3000. If we come over here and compile the program and run it, you see you are rich, you are very generous because Again, they are still at $11,000, so they get you are rich. And since this 3,000 divided by 11,000 is greater than 20% or 0.2, you get you are very generous output to the screen. And then if we make it fall into this case by saying, I don't know, 6,000, and we'll just, sure, they give away half their income. Awesome for them. Let's clear out all this over here and compile and run our program, you see you get you are almost rich because now they have $6,000 and which is not greater than 10,000. So it comes down to this else if right here and 6,000 is greater than 5,000. So it comes into here and outputs you are almost rich and since they're giving away half their income when six 3,000 divided by 6,000 is 0.5, so that is greater than 0.1. So they get output. You are very generous, as you see there. But if they only gave away, say, $10 of their income, and we came back over here and compiled and ran this program, you would see you are almost rich and you should give more to charity because, it again, it comes into this statement right here. And when it checks that 10 divided by 6,000 is not greater than 10%, so it outputs you should give more to charity. And that is all that I have for you for this video. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next.